Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is January 4th, 4th 2012, the first show of the new year. And this is one of those shows that uh, reminds me of what's uh, typical, if there is such a thing as typical on Teachers Teaching Teachers, and that is uh, kind of the faculty meeting approach to the show. Cool. And so um, I think we're talking about, there seems to be uh, kind of a political kinds of theme running through this and advocacy kind of theme, and then also how to improve teaching. I'm seeing those three things. Cool. So um, where do you want to start? Uh, Chris, why don't you say more about, and so we just um, have Monica Hardy here and myself and Chris Sloan and anybody else who might join us. I put out uh, a pretty public invitation, but it's us. So let's talk. Uh, Chris, do you want to say, you know, how you see the two things yeah. again? Yeah. Well, um, in our writing project site, which is the Wasatch Range Writing Project in Utah, you know, there are some changes because the National Writing Project doesn't have its federal funding anymore. But there's yet this committed group of uh, teachers who still want to continue on the work, which is going on around the country. Um, people still want to do that kind of work. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to meet Saturday about um, trying to have teacher voices be heard more. And um, we uh, had a meeting a while ago where it seemed like there were a couple of things happening. One is teachers are overworked and underappreciated, but that they also, and so in, in the one sense, you know, it, it's kind of a, you know, difficult time for a lot of classroom teachers. But yet there was this um, pervading sense of hope and goodness that still, um, you know, was apparent in all the, the people in the room. So then we thought, well, why don't we have Saturday's meeting that's coming up uh, about people writing and, and getting their teacher voices heard by legislatures. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to talk about youth voices, uh, always. Oh, am. Yeah. Um, and you said you had did a survey with some of your students. So we'd love to hear about that. And I've recently revised a, I call it simply a grid, um, but um, I'd like to, I'd be happy to talk about that. And, but Monica, do you want to say a little bit um, about your meeting with, is it Jared, is his name Paulus? Uh, Jared Paulus on Friday? And then we yeah. can just see where this goes, the three of us. Go ahead. Um. Well, just the approach that we've had with everything makes life really interesting um, because it's not, nothing is like normal, but <laughs> nothing is protocol, I guess you could say. And so, um, yeah, I have a meeting um, with Jared on Friday and I'm looking forward to it. And we've had a Twitter exchange and um, being a math teacher of 20 years, I've never really been into politics um, and so this is something new for me and um, so I, I put this Google Doc up to get some feedback um, I'm a firm believer especially after experiences such as the last few days with this Google Doc that our riches come from the connections that we make you know and um, so to me I'm very much looking forward to talking with Jared uh, but I have to say the experience of um, getting together with my peers over why, why do I want to talk to him? And, you know, why is, why is getting together like this important? And what is our focus for what we're doing? Mm -hmm. um, that the in that getting together with him came by um, not fluke in a sense of it just happened out of the air, um, but a city council woman um, who is part of him coming to Loveland um, arranged it without a request from me. I had requested through his um, site to talk to him because um, a friend 
who listened to the story of what we were doing recommended um, when they heard us talking about, well, in the future, we're thinking along the lines of funding this um, with government monies per census, you know, and let's, let's look at how many kids are in the district and let's get funding that way. And then um, what we're doing, we're in the, um, year two of a four-year plan that kids crowdsourced um, a couple years ago. And so what we're doing at this point is we're crowdsourcing our community and we're finding out what communities of practice are, is our community in. Um, and, and then looking at, okay, so a lot of people are into um, hackerspace because uh, there's a lot of kids into robotics and programming and they're doing it after hours, um, you know, on outside of school time. So that's one of our first spaces to crowdsource. So I've talked to some business people. We're looking at spaces to secure for that. So those, those are the, mm -hmm. that's part of the plan of how to um, scale this across as opposed to scale it up and how to sustain it um, to show that we are a town that wants to talk t to each other and take care of each other and that it's more about a social currency than it is a monetary currency. Um, so anyway, this just happened. You know, this friend said, well, you should talk to Jared. I didn't know who he was, you know, because I'm not a, in politics. And so I wrote this note, um, and then um, I get this phone call, and not, this wasn't connected at all, but I, hey, Scott. So I get this phone call that um, I have a meeting with him Friday, you know, and mm -hmm. um, tweeted him because that's what I do. And um, he tweeted right back and said he'd looked through our site and was looking forward to getting together. So then I crafted this um, Google Doc, putting down kind of the story of what we were doing. And I've had a lot of feedback from friends and different people. And w one of the sides is like, what exactly are you asking from him? And you need to be more clear about, you know, what you're wanting from him. And so that it's gone through many gyrations and I'm feeling really good now about, um, I'm not asking anything from him really. Um, I want, what we've talked about through the course of the last four years is we want people to know what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But if we were to dictate or, you know, really define things that loses the whole purpose of what we're about can i you, but funding is part of it right and is that why he's gonna i mean is that why it's tricky because you are asking for something but, i don't think i am anymore yeah. you know okay. I didn't, you're not asking I, for funding anymore um, I don't know that I ever was i mean because okay. the meeting just happened i'm i am going to tell him what we're doing um, uh -huh. and, um, hopefully he'll be interested in what we're doing. Um, we wouldn't turn down funding, but the last two years when I've been approached about funding or looked into grants, um, there's too many strings attached. And if, I think if we want to change the way things are, we need to be bold enough and, and trust in people enough and trust in, um, learning enough to um, not have everything rely on what it's relied on in the past. And if I believe that, um, which I do, I, I think we need to keep modeling that. And we need to keep modeling um, that it's dependent more upon people and people are good than it is on, because um, what I'm seeing is in any district, um, what we end up doing is we end up, it's a competition. And in order for me to get this, I've got to knock somebody else off mm -hmm. of, you know, the funding or whatever. Um, and I, different things, but Lisa Gansky's The Mesh made me a firm believer in that we don't need more resources. We just need to be more resourceful. There's plenty of people in town that are just amazing people. Many of them retired. Um, there's no reason for us to keep funding school the way we're funding school. Um, and so I, I think that we can do it without funds um, from the government that are attached to 
specific ways that we need to do it because I think those specific ways um, like a publicly prescribed curriculum and standardized tests bring in a whole bunch of other um, baggage and um, it consumes a bunch of energy and um, people and resources that are against what we're about. I think a lot of people have this voice. Um, and so, so yeah, it's, it's, we're, this is what we're doing. And um, I'm very glad to meet Jared, um, find out more about what he's about and you know what maybe is in his gut that he wishes could happen and who has his hands tied. Um, Did I'm, I'm very firmly not into, you know, some kind of sales pitch in order to get another year in, you know, because, and, and here's the reason, um, a lot of people in my district are my dear friends, and they are at their wits end, as you were talking about, Chris, um, they're ready for something like this to happen. And it's not going to happen if, if we keep on playing the game just because we get money to play the game. Mm -hmm. Hi, Scott. Agreed. It looks like Scott has a special guest there. Yes. Let's talk to her. <laughs> there you go. Hi. 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 <laughs> Tell us what's new. Nothing too much. We haven't been in school. Oh. When do you go back? The night. Wow. A lot of time. It's the same as us. Yeah, but they finished up the 23rd of December, so they went right up till the end. That was us as well. That was kind of weird this year. Yeah, we started uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Because we uh, left early, like whatever, the 16th, we were done. Wow. So that was kind of nice. Yeah. But well, now we're back at it. That's ski culture, right? Yeah, although there's not a lot of snow. I don't know about Colorado, but we don't have a whole lot of snow this year. A little worrisome. We've had a ton of snow. You but have? today was like really? 60 degrees, so. <laughs> Good. Well, Happy New Year, Scott. And is it Kelsey? Is that right? Yes. Okay. So what are, you, what are you looking forward to in 2012? I don't really know yet. It hasn't really presented too many opportunities. It's only like the fourth, I think, so. <laughs> uh, what What is it about school that you would say you like most, Kelsey, right now? Like, is there anything that's really good that really you're ha happy to go do at school? I like language class. That's just me, but I like the teacher. I like the way it's set up. What, what's different about that class? I don't know. Fair enough. I, Karen might be with us. Karen, are you there? It looked like she was joining us, but I don't know. And Scott, what's new with you? Are you done with the third grade class? And are you looking to new things now, or what's going on? Yeah, I finished up the student teaching in third grade that the 23rd of December mm -hmm. and I finished up my last assignment for my last class for my degree about an hour ago so I am DUN done. Wow. So all, all I need to do is get a CPR certification and I can apply for my license. Cool. And then apply for schools is that right? Yes. I, there's a few opportunities out you know mid-year retirements and such but I think I'm going to Take my time and interview a few schools because I mean I have a job already. I'm not in dire straits, so I can interview them just as much as they interview me. Then I'll get set up for the fall. Okay. Cool. Did you connect with Pam? Uh, we've exchanged emails, but we haven't had a chance to have any discussion yet. I guess it's been the holidays since you last talked, so. Yep. So I'm sorry I showed up late and I stopped the conversation. What, what are we talking about tonight? Uh, we were 
just getting started kind of thing. <laughs> uh, Karen, can you talk, by the way? I see you in the chat. And it, you're trying to do this without video, which is cool. But can you speak? We don't hear you. Nope. Okay, well, that was an interesting test. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Maybe she's in and out. Keep trying new things. There is a new chat over at edtechtalk.com slash live. And um, a couple people are there. Peggy and looks like Karen is there as well. Um, sh should I try to describe this uh, grid, as I call it? And yeah. And then... Um, it's now what I don't quite understand is right now it's on the screen and it's also on the live stream. But can those of you here see it or not? It's the spring 2012 power up or something. Yes. Power user's guide. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's there. But can you click on it and see it? I can. Okay. Can everybody do that and we see that at the same time? So I that, see it on live stream, but not on the Google Hangout. I got can, it on you, the... can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Over okay. under documents, it should be listed there. It says spring 2012. Is that how you did it, Chris? You clicked on it? Yep, that's how you do it. That works? Yeah, okay. it fills your screen then. Oh, cool. Uh, so, look. Please interrupt me because I don't want to go on and on about this thing. I can say this. It's, I've been doing it for on and off for like three years now. Um, maybe longer. I, I lose track. And what I've tried to do this time is incorporate uh, a few of the Common Core standards. There are a few Common Core standards that we're kind of being asked to look at in New York City in particular. Um, and it's lots of confusing stuff around that. I, I mean, I'm really impressed with how incoherent the um, standards uh, bearers are often. By that, I just mean it's really hard to even figure out. Like, New York City has their version. The New York C State has their version. And then there's a national version of them. And, like, if you put up the wrong ones on your wall, somebody from New York City will come in and, and complain that you put the wrong standard up. Anyway, silly stuff they're like not that. But, anymore. Pardon? But they're not common anymore. If they're yeah, right. <laughs> well, uh, New York City thought literature was left out too much, so they, they went back and tacked it back in as much as they could. Um, that's one of the things. I I don't care. I can say all this, right? Um, the... <laughs> Anyway, so, but having said all that, I personally don't mind the standards as they are on paper. I think some of the some of the stuff is really very supportive of the kinds of thinking we want to do in a social network with kids. The kind of um, using good nonfiction, um, having kids do a lot of research. Um, and and the kind of writing that uh, that we want kids to do, I think, is supported by a lot of what's in the Common Core. Um, so let me just say that then. Uh, so the, on the left side, I've listed now, and this is a change um, from other versions of this thing. I've listed three of the common core standards. There's a literature standard called Read and Comprehend Literature, including stories. There's that one. There's one that I think fits well with um, some of the emphasis that we do on online research, where they ask kids to cite strong, thorough textual evidence, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's one about writing arguments to support claims, um, which I think is pretty clear too. Um, and useful. And then I split that one up and put it up with comments and replies. Um, I should stop real fast and ask if I'm making any sense. Um, and I, I'm yes. happy to be challenged. <laughs> I'm happy to be challenged on this too. Here's here's what's a little un. But here's what's um. 
I hope that this grid ends up representing a description of what my kids do, not a prescription for what they should do, right? Um, and then, but not every student does all of this, but it's like, so that's why I call it Power User's Guide, right? So if you, if you wanted to um, do a lot of this and put it all together, you could. I also originally tried to make this to, to describe my habits within a week, right? Um, so that um, the, the kinds of habits that I, that kind of a good citizen online does. Um, that's what I'm trying to represent. Having, and then, and then there are so many layers built into this thing at this point that it, it's kind of silly, but I'll say it really fast. There's the traits in writing are, are incorporated here. There's literature circles incorporated here. There's some reading stuff. There's some how do you do research kinds of things. And then there's, oh, the, like standards about um, uh, what, what kinds of things we should do because of technology. And it, those kinds of standards, and I can be more specific about that at another time. But it seemed to me that a lot of those things overlap and kind of get boringly similar. And what's what I'm trying to do on this grid is put out to students what they need to do, need to do, want to do, whatever, um, each week um, to kind of do those kinds of things. So what goes across the top is uh, some version of all those things I just said. So that we want kids to reflect and connect. We want kids to wonder. We want kids to investigate. We want them to um, construct and express themselves. Um, not terribly important language, but playing with it there. Um, yep. Hey, I'll Paul. Stop. Yeah. There's a question in uh, the chat room that asked if you, you don't have 16 assignments due every week, right? Yep, I do. Um, but you do okay. But you know what? It's not a. It's not that big a deal. You know, um, the. So. But the, are they assignments? I I hope they're a little. Well, more. Um, they're smaller than assignments. Let's say. Um, so I I think I think a kid. So the idea is that if you're given this piece of paper on Monday and you're said by next Monday, um, see which parts of this you want to do, can do, um, you kind of have some freedom to explore and to, to do different pieces of it. So that if you, if you don't want to do any replies this week, you won't do anything on the, t the top row. But then we're all kind of clear on what you're doing, what we're not doing. Um, you know, what the possibilities are. Um, so, so well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, a couple things that I really like about it is that you've, um, you know, the emphasis on discussion, I think, is coming through pretty clear here. And, you know, again, when I think of my pre-digital classroom, I don't know that discussion was as big a part of um, my, I know it wasn't as big a part of my classroom, and I think, you know, that's definitely a change for the better, mm -hmm. but like comments and replies is its own category, and discussion posts, literature discussion, so there's definitely more emphasis on talking about it, and one of the things that my students have said is, um, can't my discussion be, uh, you know, like a, what if I write like a really good comment, can't that be like a discussion? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the answer is yes. And maybe that goes without saying, but for my students, we're not uh, online as much maybe as yours. Um, but that kind of idea that they're buying into the discussion part of things, I think has been a real positive change in my own classroom. So I do notice that that seems really like uh, a powerful part of this. Yeah, and let me just respond to that by saying if you, look at the language that goes across the first row. It starts off with um, just connecting to anything you want to find. 
and then it moves into connecting with something that is important to you also, like a, an issue in the world that you're connecting to. Um, and then it asks you to actually quote from something that you've read elsewhere in your comment, right? So it would, it would encourage and kind of, I don't know, validate your, your students' requests like you just said that you know maybe a comment can be as as important as a discussion post would hopefully do that and then and then it ends up with you know hopefully you're having an actual discussion so it's not just you putting something up online it's also you're replying to other people's comments to your post as well so again whether or not you do all four of those and if it works out like that just suggesting to students that there are those different um, possibilities is one of the things we're hoping to do with this. Any, any, should I stop, <laughs> keep going or, or, I, you know, one of the things that is, is really frustrating about a form like this is it's, it's like these things don't go in boxes and they don't go in order. And you want to give kids lots of freedom to move around and do different things, um, while at the same time inspiring them to do as much as they can, kind of thing. Um, so the literature piece of it, if you're not an English teacher, I don't know if you would do this row. Maybe this row would look different in a different kind of class. But um, I'm working with a bunch of teachers in the New York City Writing Project, a bunch, six teachers in the New York City Writing Project. And they all happen to be English teachers, so, uh, and it's okay, I don't, anyway, so, but on the other hand, maybe literature is wonderful, and it would be good if we all had more literature in our lives. So, <laughs> so what I'm suggesting here is that in Google Docs, people start writing about something um, at some point in the week. They don't publish that right away. They keep reading the book, and then they keep writing a little more. Um, and there are kind of guides to to push all this kind of writing in different ways. And then they do that one more time. So that that symbol there with the globe and the arrow suggests how when that they twice a week they want to post something about something they're reading. Um, hopefully and then so I don't know how that integrates as well as the other stuff does. I can say that. But what I like about this grid is it's not perfect at all. It's, you know, we're still messing with it and keep messing with it. I'll talk about the third and the fourth um, rows really quickly, and then I'll see if anybody wants to talk about this anymore or question the whole approach, if you'd like. Um, the, uh, so the, there's, on the third row, if you notice kind of closely, there's a suggestion that kids be aware of different kinds of sources that are on that they can find online and it's kind of a weird list but if you look in the first box it's a wikipedia article a blog post a poem or a current news item um, and <laughs> that, that hopefully gives them a suggestion that there's lots of choice but that there's a, a certain Level of, of intensity is all I can talk about. Um, and length of, of, of commitment in the writing and the reading in that box. And then in the next one over, it asks them to look for something a little longer, a little more in depth, a chapter of a book, um, a journal or an article. Um, so to at least ask them to kind of think about what they're finding. And then further over, it asks them to find a podcast or a video. Again, can they do that every week? No, but a kid could say, you know, I want to just do, look at videos this week and I can say, that's great, but you know, you might also some point do some of this other stuff. So it's, it's about those possibilities. And um, all those links, by the way, work. There's a, anyway, to, to, to help support all of this. And then finally, um, they're asked to find a few quotes that they want to add into their post for this week. So the question earlier, are you asking kids to do 15, 16 assignments? Sort of, but they're not really. So 
last line, and then hopefully this will make all a little more sense, is some sort of generating process um, that you want to give kids. I've suggested a few there. There's um, Sandra Pearl's composing guidelines, Peter Elbow's loops, uh, using free writing, not to just free write, but to, to actually generate your thoughts. Notice that, again, I put this on here because I think it's really important that kids do that more open generative writing before they get to thinking about structuring it into an essay. But then I also think looking at different structures is useful. So the next box over, you know, suggests that there are ways to revise and use different structures. And Monica, I wanted to say that I popped into your document, the JER-Ed document that you were working on today, and I noticed all of the kind of um, connections you were making. I try to do that kind of same thing in class, and that second box in the fourth row kind of represents that, that kids share their documents way early um, in the process, you know, just as soon as they open them up. And then I ask them to kind of look at each other's stuff and, and chat with each other um, on docs. It's an important kind of connected kind of writing that I want them to be doing. Um, and then they look to bring down some of their research. You'll notice that the, there are two boxes there, the one in the third row and the one in the fourth row that are kind of the same thing which is finding ways to get quotes into your writing, like bring different voices together. And then you want to post that. Now, does every kid do one of those every week? Probably not. They probably do half of that once a week. Or, you know, maybe some kid wants to go longer with a piece and it takes them two or three weeks. But it still gives us a kind of guide to kind of look at. Um, all right, and you'll notice in that last box, they're asked to use some images and to record and to put all that together as a presentation up online. So, yeah, <laughs> a little intimidating perhaps, but again, I would never show this to kids in the first semester. I don't um, like the it it because I follow what they're doing and and try to describe what they're doing on this document. Um, so that was a longer presentation than I had planned, and I really like more dialogue here, guys. So <laughs> speak up. Uh, I have a question for you. Please. And so, let's hear about um, you know, your survey, you... too. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I'm wondering how it looks in your classroom. Are you guys on Youth Voices All Class? or? Not... <sighs> It, it it's totally it varies a lot <laughs> it's possible but, but is it is but it no, working we're not. well when you're all on the site what oh yeah well, well no i problem. was having some some earlier in the year um i was yeah, having trouble anymore. with um not anymore no 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 yeah we fixed all that sorry oh, okay yeah so you're i'll get back on that because i've been doing them have having my students do all their youth voice stuff outside of class and that's been um not as uh there's not as much good energy i noticed uh -huh. doing it that way yeah so um i will get back on doing that in the classroom um, but anyway paul one of the things i noticed in my survey and then i'll let someone else talk <laughs> is you know one of the questions i asked was do you want me to give you assignment topics or are you happy with the open-ended approach that I do, which is like basically tell them come up with something once a week and post it uh, on your own is how we've been doing it, uh, and just based on your interests. And the vast majority, like nine out of ten of them, said we really like the fact that this is so open-ended. Really? So I would go back to you know your grid is what I like about it is it there's a lot of open-endedness about it, like I could enter that uh, document in whatever stage of writing I'm in or whatever I'm reading. And, and so it works well with what my students like. Mm -hmm. Monica, are you on by accident or do you want to ask or say something? <laughs> Hi. Um, what do you mean on by accident? No, you popped on the screen, <laughs> my screen. Oh, I threw something in the link in the um, both places, I hope. 
um, kind of funny that it's headed this way. Um, hmm. Michael Wesh, four years ago, mm -hmm. um, really jump-started all the things that we're doing, and um, we piloted a pre-AP Algebra 2 class, and um, it was self-directed. And so it was pretty much, you guys know what you have to do by the end. You know, the time mm -hmm. is all yours. Do whatever you want. And so um, what I threw out there was what we modeled, an editable wiki after what Michael Wesh does with his, um, he's at K-State. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of has the notes that we started with and the philosophy that we started with. And then um, I just see a lot of similarities with what your grid is there. Um, this is what the kids came up with. Um, let me throw it in there as well. Mm -hmm. So this again is for a pre-AP Algebra 2 class um, and slow starting, um, but as you can see, as time progressed, the grid got pretty intense. If, as, um, like I would start, it would, per their request, I would spend five or 10 minutes a day going over the, um, the lessons. And then we'd also throw in maybe MIT lectures or whatever that compared to those lessons. Can you guys see the grid that says um, jings um, and voice threads? Is it, is it on, do you have it on your computer? Because you can share yeah, your screen. Just, At the I, top I, there's I a- I threw it in both. I don't know how to share, oh, share screen. Yeah, why don't you okay. try it? It's a good night to try things out. <laughs> so now do you see Algebra 2? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's there. I think I see it. Does everyone else see it? Yep, Chris is shaking his head. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so this is um, how to run our class. This was the editable wiki, and all of this colored stuff is from studying what how Michael Wesh did his class, and it was very much letting the kids take over. You know, so the syllabus, they could edit as you went along. So that was our model. And this is kind of what they ended up with because four years ago I was in a structured class where we did have to have these outcomes and they would have to test. And so they came up with, well, what if we teach ourselves? You know, we've got this end result that we have to do. And so along the left-hand side are the units, which match up with our, um, the core, the curriculum that we had um, back then, which is very similar to what we have now. Um, and, and what we would do is um, have a lesson, five or ten minutes, on a voice thread or a jing that they could watch over and over if they wanted to, or not watch at all. We threw in some MIT lectures or whatever that would match up with it. The mm -hmm. second column would be visuals, and in the beginning there, there wasn't a, a lot, but for math there could be like um, the sinusoidal wave um, and how it would look on the unit circle. We also had a guy from India, his name is Raul, and he would um, take questions from kids, like if they wanted to see, um, there's Raul's little section. If they wanted to see logarithms in real life, he would research that and throw that in that section. The third section was practice, so we ended up loading it up. On the right-hand side, if you can see all those links to Khan Academy, Brightstorm, and we would load it up with um, practice worksheets, whatever they wanted to practice. And then the left, the far right side, um, were quiz quizzes that they could take so a kid could just listen you know the five minutes and then know that he got it and not do anything it's it was his time and he could spend the rest of the time like a 20 percent google or 80 percent google following his passion and spending his time doing that um, it was just up to them to be ready you know and that's where these quizzes started on the far right started getting bigger and bigger because they you know some of them would go and spend more time on the visuals, or some of them would spend more time on the worksheets. But then they would test themselves, you know, with these quizzes to see if they were ready and, and could say, I'm done with this unit, and now I'm going to spend the rest of the time on my own. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you say this was more or less blended? In other words, could they do this online? Oh, it was definitely, I mean, again, it was four years ago, uh -huh, but it's yeah. definitely got the elements of a flipped classroom blended mm -hmm. and they were, they all had, this was year, this was um, the pilot year before our four years. And so we spent the summer before writing grants for whoever didn't have 
laptops. So all of them had laptops. Um, I, I was planning to do nothing, um, but by their decisions, they wanted me to present the first five minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very much what people are calling blended and flipped. Yeah. Um, although I do want to add that a, a true flipped is it's a mindset of, you know, who's owning the learning. Um, and it's, it's not so much doing something at home or at school because what we ended up doing is there was no homework. Um, they decided their own grades. And so it wasn't like they got the whole class period and they got to decide what to do with the class period. So if they wanted to do more at home, they, they could, but they got the class period to do all the stuff that people are now saying flip and do that at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you're back. Good. <laughs> so, but say a little more about your thinking because about where you are now you know that was four years ago and it was a more structured class um because yeah because i think i think we always struggle with freedom and inspiration and you know what what i think is inspiration a kid thinks is you know constriction <laughs> you know we all it's 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 hard yeah this is this is how we've come to the biggest thing is um, getting rid of the publicly prescribed curriculum and um, because that pilot year the, the goal was I asked the district could I have permission to have them do a self-directed math class you know and what they found at the end of the year is they didn't have enough in them to self-direct school math because while most of them are very good at mathematical thinking um, or maybe have a could have a passion towards mathematical thinking very few of them had a passion towards school math mm -hmm. and so what they found is it would be better to leave it to the people who that was their field you know and it would be better to just find what they needed to know I mean that's that's not learning to me that's that's getting ready for a test you know but right. that's what they were asked to do and so they did they on, on all the testing scores, they were a little bit below the other classes, the pre-AP Algebra two classes at the beginning. They were a little bit above at the end. So in, by those means, they were successful, um, but not enough, you know, I just wanted to make sure, you know, that they weren't gonna be, people were saying, this isn't work at all. But what we found was it in, wasn't anywhere near what they wanted to be as far as being inspiring and, and feeling like they were truly wanting to get up the next day and go at it again, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where they, that year also when in their free time, because they were doing this in a very effective way for them, they wrote up this four year plan um, to redefine school. And so the next year it was, you can't, you can't do something that's already, um, you know, that's a prescribed curriculum, or you won't have the gumption to finish it yourself. So the first year of the lab, um, they they went before the curriculum committee and asked if they could do their own propassion courses, and they would write up their cur own curriculum for the year. Well, the failure that we found at the end of that year was, even if they wrote it up for themselves, if it was for a whole year, that's not how learning goes. Learning mm -hmm. is much messier than that, and there needs to be much more flexibility and rhizomatic journeys, you know. So this year it's, um, they are just in the lab, independent study through me, and by the end of the year, they decide what they learned and what they possibly want credentialed or they don't care because they're just so glad that they got to learn what they got to learn or experience what they got to experience. Uh -huh. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do I stop sharing the screen? Uh, you did. Am I still sharing it? You're back. Okay. Yeah, you've been back a while. <laughs> We've been looking at you. Anyway, I'm I'm still looking at your grid, Paul. Okay, now uh, I'm back. There you go. <laughs> I. Right. So. I guess between, I don't know if it's between because it's not on a you know one line, but. I agree that, um, like, I, I'm not surprised that they, you don't want to do a whole curriculum for a whole year. Um, but I also, I kind of wonder if there are ways to 
identify habits that kids have and that work for them. Um, that's what the, yeah. that's what the detox that we're doing does. Mm -hmm. um, so we we do have a model, the process of learning, yeah. um, and that's what they self reflect on daily. And to me, that's what's really missing in 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 education, time, and space, and possibly right now for kids who have been through the system and adults who have been through the system, a model to prompt them to do self reflection. Uh huh. So they're reflecting on, you know, what have they noticed? Um, what have they dreamt about? Um, what, who have they connected with and what have they connected? And then what have they actually done? Uh -huh. And did it matter? Was it awesome? You know? Mm. We got a bunch so of Monica, new computers. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, you've been doing this for a couple of years now, right? Four years. Um, the lab is to, into their second year, but I've been had this space to work with kids for four years. And um, so there, there are some people who've continued with you for four years, or just two. Um, there's some that um, let's see, they're on their third year. And they're in there's, high school. The, the other ones are gone, um, but I'm still. They're still coming back, and, and you know. We're, we're, we've got permission to, to work with some um, university students the same way that I got permission to work with um, the kids in the district here. And some of them are ones that, you know, were part of this four years ago. So what are some, like, um, you know, teachers always have these kinds of success stories where, you know, like uh, so-and-so came back and said, you know, I really, the rhizomatic thing makes sense to me now or or that like do you have those kinds of things where like if you've worked with people for a couple of years I would think like some of them must be really pretty fired up into about what they're doing right yeah there's a, a mix there because because the ones I've been working with you know are now juniors or seniors or in college and since we're still working on a whole you know all the way up and down um, it's it's a really tough time for them because while they will say I believe in this and this is totally what I want, you know, I'm, it's still a scary place and, you know, maybe I need a diploma and maybe I need to do that. But the good part is um, they're going back and saying, now I know it's my choice. It's not like I'm, while I don't like that the system is this way and that I have to get this diploma when I know that what I've done, you know, I write an opera, you know, I taught game design, those things are, more proof of who I am. Um, I know people might look at a diploma, so now I, I have a reason to go back and take these classes, and so they are going back with more purpose. Um, and I, I do want to add another piece. Alex Pappas has been on here um, from our school, mm -hmm. and we are um, working with them quite a bit, and our school is a space where you go and it just says, what do you want to learn, what do you want to teach? And then they try to help you connect with people in your community. Well, they've just upgraded their site. And so uh, along the lines of a diploma and feeling like, you know, a resume for your future employer, um, if you go to your page on their site, um, it shows what classes you've taught and, and what things you've learned. And then you can also go and look at, um, like, if you taught a class, who was in your class? So, like, a future employer could say, yeah, he's learned a lot of stuff, and look, he's shared a lot of that stuff. He could also go look at the people that were a part of his class and, and see, was he bunk? You know, was he fair? So we're thinking, you know, along the lines of what we've talked before, have you put stuff on Wikipedia? What do you have on YouTube? What is your online presence? But now also, what specifically have you taught? What specifically have you learned? Um, so there are, there's ways, there's ways that are, to me, much more real and authentic to show what a person is like, you know, than um, our, our, our way to credential today. But, you know, not, there's, but's not the way to start with it. But I'm thinking that a prompt for, a prompt in time for self reflection, uh, a kind of, I don't know what to call it, push, but a, 
making resources in the community available and kind of it sounds like you say to kids connect with people in your community um i think those are different kinds of things than a publicly prescribed curriculum but aren't those pieces of a curriculum as well you know what i'm saying you could call detox you could call detox a curriculum uh -huh. you know you could say this is this is our standard that we are in you know unless people don't even need it our the research <laughs> that we're doing with csu is what effect mm -hmm. does an experience with detox do to a person right and you know our speculation is that it makes them a more self-directed learner it it helps them to know what to do and they don't know what to do and so yeah but right how to be a self-directed learner as i think it sounds like you're finding out in this research it's not easy like i mean kids come in I mean, that's not, they don't necessarily have the skills to be a self-directed learner, or that's not it's the way not, I'd say it. it yeah, right, they need to take stuff right off. Now. Yeah, what? Go ahead. It's not easy right now, and that's why we're calling it detox. Uh -huh. um, but we're also working with young kids, and we believe that if, if there wasn't a publicly prescribed curriculum as they come in as a five-year-old, and we are facilitating their curiosity um, as opposed to stifling it, um, we, we do believe that learning is natural and that um, we won't need detox in the future. We feel like, again, detox is a word that means we need to get back to something that's healthy. Mm -hmm. And so that's, yeah. I don't think it's going to be difficult I, in the future. Right. I love my students, but I can't use that word because that's, it means exactly what it means for them. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, that's what's so cool. That's what's so cool yeah. about this, though, because uh -huh. if, if you're working on a quality of life, and mm. is my success that my community has changed, um, that will get rid of a lot of the things that we spend our time doing. One of the things that's not great is that our suicide rate um, in this mm. Larimer County is is like sixth in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of drug and alcohol stuff, so. To me, I mean, it's going to get at that. So to me, it's fine that it's called that. Oh, it's, they they know what that yeah. means, you know. Yeah. Yep. And that's exactly what it means. I feel like we have a prescription. We're addicted to this drug of tell me what to do because I don't know what to do if unless you tell me what to do. So those first few years of the lab, it was very difficult. People would sit and say, I don't know what to do. And they'd get very frustrated because they didn't yeah. know what to do. And we'd have all these debates about what is productivity, you know. Cool. Chris, I, we're close on time, but I wanted to ask if there were a few other insights from the survey you did, because that might not feel so fresh to say in the future. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things, you know, because I kind of have been, um, you know, uh, in my particular setup, it was I was having some technical uh, difficulties early in the year on the site, oh, and uh, it wasn't and so it wasn't I, your fault. Yeah. But I hope no, no. But I mean, I you know, most of those a, are fixed. By the way, go ahead. Right. So um, I um, I asked him a question that I thought was kind of interesting. I said, "Have you ever had technical difficulties on the site?" Because you know, I, I always try to find like you know, why isn't everybody just completely on board and just loving it? <laughs> and, you know. It, is one of my things I'm curious about. And so one of my hypotheses was that maybe, um, you know, some of the snafus early um, prevented them. And, and so, you know, about half of them said, yeah, we have had technical difficulties on the site. But then I asked the question, uh, well, if you ask, if he answered yes to that, even though you had difficulties, did you figure it out? And, um, you know, like 80% of those kids said, yeah, we figured it out. So I thought that was kind of a testament to kind of what Monica was talking about. Um, you know, they can figure things out and, and we don't have to spoon feed them, even things like technical difficulties, which I think is a really important lesson to learn when you're doing technology is like things aren't always going to work. The thing may not always turn on and it may not work the way you want it to work, but did you figure out 
how to get to that point. And it's those kids then who answered no to that question that I really want to focus in on. Those ones that, you know, there were like eight kids who said, I had technical difficulties and I still didn't quite figure it out the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So like to me, to get to those eight kids seems like a really valuable use of my time since, you know, 33 kids said, well, I figured it out on my own. So mm -hmm. little things like that, um, I, I really like asking my students their opinion of things. And that's that's one of the things that stood out is like I have some some students that I, I think um, I can really help. Hmm. Anything else or is it useful? Uh, let's see here. Um, I'll look at something yeah. else. Only if you're passionate about it, Chris, you don't have to. <laughs> Oh no, we're good. Uh, oh, there's some. Oh, I, I asked him about valuing. Do you value this activity? And uh, that was something that we talked about a while ago. Is like, how can I get them to value this? Because I think if they value it, uh, all will go well. And um, they. Short story is yes, <laughs> they value it. I just uh, did this today, and I was just looking at the result. But uh, one of the highest things was, yeah, I think this is valuable, and I think this is going to help me in the future. Was a question that I asked that a, a large majority of them uh, said, yeah, this is not only valuable, but I think it's the kind of thing that will help me. And I didn't know that they would answer that. I thought, like, you know, we as teachers roll out stuff, and and sometimes you know, it's it's possible that what we roll out isn't of value or seen as important to them. And so, uh, you know, it was kind of reassuring to me that uh, a lot of them said, you know, we find this activity really valuable, even though I haven't been um, putting it in the middle of the curriculum uh, like I did last year, but I'll hmm. bring it back into the classroom now. Cool. Uh, Karen or Scott, do you guys want to have last thoughts tonight? <laughs> Karen's just lurking there. You know, she I, she shrugged her shoulders. Everybody, Scott, you have any thoughts? Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're, Karen and I and Peggy are conversing in the chat room a little so bit, but it's we will we will uh, publish that chat along with this video, um, but we should wrap up for tonight. Um, we uh, have some uh, plans to talk to Deborah Freeze on the 18th of this month. Um, and then next week we will do something else. But maybe we could get back to Walk Out, Walk On. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, good luck with your conversation on Friday. And Chris, <laughs> with your talk with teachers Saturday and so forth. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say that, and so anybody else have one have last word after this, is that um, I've set up a, the National Writing Project has helped me think about how to invite more people locally at, in the New York City Writing Project to, to think about using youth voices. So there's a study group of six teachers who we're going to be meeting with once a month, really, and um, over the spring. So it'll be interesting to kind of see if I can show <laughs> why I use this site and and how we kind of imagine it. Because it's not a site; it's a it's an approach. It's um you know, it's an attempt to to rethink curriculum in school in some ways. We think. But anyway, so that's some of what I'll be messing with this year. Um, anybody else have any final thoughts tonight? Yeah, you just all want to get off. That's <laughs> fine. Let's uh, let's say goodbye. Thank you um, so much for coming by and for um, listening to me tonight. Gosh, anyway, uh, and each other. Uh, we do want to say uh, thank you to Jeff Lebo for improving the chat over there at edtechtalk.com um, slash live. 
and um, thank you to Dave Cormier, who helps out there too. Um, and both of those guys do this at worldbridges.net. Um, thank you all. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. Thanks.